hey welcome back to my channel this is tynetta from sting beauty and today i'm going to be going over this whole full set process of how to get these long coffin nails as well as how to get the snake print effect if you want to learn how i did this then please continue watching don't forget to subscribe for more videos so the first thing that i'm going to do is push her cuticles back pushing her cuticles back is going to start the process of removing the dead skin from the nail plate when we're doing the nail prep, the whole purpose of nail prep is to prepare the nail plate for the acrylic. So you want to make sure you remove all the dead skin off the nail, as well as any oil and shine from the surface. Okay. So here I'm going in with my 150 grit sanding band and I have my e-file at a very slow speed. And the first two fingers are not sped up at all. So you can see how slow I'm actually going. And basically, you just want to hold the drill bit parallel to their natural nail. That way you're not going to be digging any rings into her nail or making any indents. You want to take your time and carefully go around the side walls and the cuticle area to remove any of the dead skin that you can see. You want to make sure you take your time with this step because this is one of the most important steps to keeping your nails on. Okay, we can do all the shaping and designs and stuff, but if your nail prep is lacking, then your nails are most likely not going to stay on. So you want to make sure you prep the entire nail plate and remove as much of that dead skin as possible. The next step I'm going to do, I'm going to use a cuticle bit and I'm going right into the sidewalls and cuticle area again using this at a very slow speed and I'm just removing the rest of that dead skin that I couldn't get off with my sanding band. You can purchase this specific cuticle bit from stingbeauty.com and I really like this bit because it gets right up close to the skin. This is where you want to make sure you're applying your acrylic of course as close to the skin as possible without touching the skin but if this white stuff which is the dead skin if that's still on the nail plate when you apply the acrylic then the acrylic is going to lift so going in with this extra step is basically just going to help remove anything that's not visible to the naked eye so that we can have the best adhesion possible once i have the nail plate all prepped and remove all the dust i'm going to apply my nail tips Today I'm using these stiletto tips from stingbeauty.com and I'm going to be using these to do the long coffin shape and I'm using my Sting Beauty brush on glue to apply these tips. So what you want to do is take the tip, measure it on the nail plate. You're looking to make sure that the nail tip covers the entire nail plate and that there's nothing left out on the side walls. Once I find a tip that fits, I'm just applying a very small amount of glue on the very edge of the nail tip and then I'm placing it on the finger and holding it in place until the glue is dry. You don't have to glue too much of the nail tip onto the nail. This is only to create the extension. You want to remember the more of the nail plate that you cover up with the nail tip is less of the nail that's going to have acrylic on it. And the acrylic is actually what's keeping the nails on. So when you're covering up the nail, you know, halfway, it can kind of affect the retention. Once I get everything glued on, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the length of the tips to how she wants them. You want to make sure you're comparing the fingers so that all the nails on both hands are all the same length. Once I get everything to the length that the client wants, I'm going to use my 100 grit file to pre-shape these tips. Being that these are stiletto tips, you do have a basic coffin shape when you cut the tip off, but I'm just bringing the sidewalls in just a little bit to make it a little more narrow. I'm also going to use this file to blend out the attachment point where I glued the tip to the natural nail. This is just going to give it a smooth surface for acrylic application. I get a lot of questions about shaping. As you can see, I'm going back and forth. 
I try not to just do one side at a time because sometimes that's how you can end up with the nail looking a little crooked because you end up filing one side in more than you actually need to. If you also notice while I'm working, I'll file and then I pick my file up, check the shape. And if I need to file some more, then I'll keep going until I get the shape that I like. At the same time, you can also see that I am comparing the nails. So once I shape the ring finger, I'm going to hold up the rest of the fingers, make sure that it's the same shape, make sure that the tip is the same width, and then move on to the next finger. Shaping the tips is an important step for me because I feel like it helps me with a clean acrylic application and it definitely cuts down on my time shaping after the acrylic is applied. It's a lot easier to shape this nail tip than it is to file on hardened acrylic. So once everything is nice and shaped, I'm going to clean the dust off the nails and um, go in with the acrylic application. So before I got here, I did apply some primer. I just used No Lift Nails Primer. You can get that at any nail supply or even Sally Beauty has it. So here I am using a nice natural acrylic color or um, kind of like a cloudy white color. This is a color that I've been testing for Sting Beauty Acrylic line, which will be dropping within the next couple months. So keep a lookout for that. But yeah, so I apply my first bead, brush that down the length of the nail, make sure everything is nice and smooth. And now I'm applying the second bead. So as you can see, I'm just really lightly tapping the acrylic with the tip of my brush guiding it into place i don't really start brushing the acrylic until it starts to harden you want to allow the acrylic to flow into place and refrain from really brushing it too hard right when you place the bead on the nail because what you end up doing is pulling all the product off the nail and then you just got to put more acrylic on so i'm just placing my beads tapping it very lightly just to guide it into place making sure that my side walls are clean but that they are covered all the way to both sides and then i'm going to blend that into the previous two beads for the cuticle bead it's the exact same only difference is i'm gently pushing this back towards her skin as close as possible without touching of course and then i'm going to blend it down and once I finish application, I'm just making sure everything is nice and smooth and making sure there's no acrylic on her skin. I also make sure that there's no dips in the nail. And if there is, I'll just add another smaller bead like I'm doing here just to fill in any gaps where I feel like the acrylic should be a little thicker. So now I'm moving on to the next nail. And here I am using a white acrylic. Same thing as the other one. This will be available within the next couple of months. I don't have an official launch date yet, but it will be here available for purchase very soon. So as you can see, I apply the bead, keep my sidewalls clean, and just brush that down the nail, making sure that I'm keeping the shape on the tip of the nail, making sure that I'm keeping the sidewalls nice and straight and smooth and keeping the tip as square as possible. This is gonna help me in the end when I'm shaping because the nail is pretty much already in the shape that it's supposed to be. So when I apply the second bead, I apply it right above where I put the first bead. Now I'm gently tapping it, guiding it where I want it to go, making sure that the bead is covering the entire nail from sidewall to sidewall and blending that down into the first bead. As you can see, I'm constantly cleaning up around her skin and cleaning the side walls to make sure everything is nice and clean. The third bead goes right above where I place the second bead. And basically that's how I do it, just to build the nail. There's no specific amount of beads, just depends on how much acrylic you need to get the nail how you want it. I know some people do their nails a little thicker, some people use less acrylic, so there's really no specific amount of beads. Just focus on getting the proper structure, getting the proper apex, 
and focus on getting the nail covered, okay? And like I said, once everything is covered, I'm gonna check her nail from different angles just to see if I need to add any more acrylic. If I do, then I'll just add small beads wherever I feel like is necessary. If you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Moving on to the ring finger, it's pretty much the same process. Apply my first bead, allow that to flow down the nail while I'm gently guiding it into place with the tip of my brush. Once the product starts to harden up a little bit, then I'm gonna use the body of my brush to smooth everything out and brush the acrylic into place. Also making sure I'm keeping the sidewalls nice and smooth, nice and straight, and making sure I'm keeping the edge of that nail as square as possible. I'm gonna place the second bead right above where I placed the first one. Make sure that the bead is covering the entire surface of the nail from sidewall to sidewall, and then slowly start to blend that in with the first bead. All the while making sure that my sidewalls are clean and I did see a little bit of a gap here, so I just added that bead at the tip. You can do that here, or you could do that at the end. It really doesn't matter. We're gonna apply my third bead right above the second bead. Same process, making sure the nail is covered and blending that bead down the nail. So while you guys watch this acrylic application, I want to talk a little bit about my product line. So stingbeauty.com, you can purchase the nail tips that I'm using. And soon, like I was saying a second ago, you're going to be able to purchase these acrylics. This white acrylic is so buttery and smooth. And I know a lot of people say this, but okay, you guys, if you go back to one of my older videos where I did the cow print acrylic nails, You'll see that white acrylic was so runny and so messy. It literally was a nightmare to work with. Um, this a product, this white, literally is no different than any of the other acrylics. It's smooth consistency. It's very easy to work with. It's not super runny. It doesn't take forever to dry. And these are all issues that I find with white acrylic for some reason. But I really love this white. Now this color... I'm really not sure what to name it. I was thinking something like, you know, cloudy something or milky white, but it's not giving me milk, honestly. It's a little bit too transparent for me to want to call it milky white. So if you think of a name, just go ahead and leave it in the comments. And if I pick your name, I'll send you a jar for free, okay? So that'll be my first kind of secret YouTube giveaway just for you guys if you can pick me a dope name for this color i will send you a jar for free so again the consistency of this is so smooth so easy to work with i just really love it and i get so happy when i get quality products and you guys don't understand so a little bit of background the reason why i'm starting to get more into nail products is just because i'm from kansas city we really don't have very many good nail supply stores here. We have to order stuff online a lot of the time. And I just want to be able to bring something to my city where it's available. If you spill something, you can get it that day. You know what I'm saying? So that's just a little bit of background. But this acrylic is perfect for me. I really love it. Also, these tips are everything. If you saw um, when I was shaping them, it didn't take any effort i didn't have to waste time cutting the tips or anything like that these tips were so easy to work with and they just cut down on a lot of time so okay so back to the nails so once the acrylic is hardened completely i'm going to use the same 100 grit file and just refine the shape of the nails when you're shaping 
you want to make sure that you're holding your file completely flat up against the nail as you can see here there's no gaps between my file and the nail they both are completely parallel to one another that is going to get you the straight line i'm also moving i won't say slow but i'm not going super fast either and as you can see the same as when i was shaping just the tips i'm going back and forth from side to side i'm also filing lift up my file and check filing lift up my file and check you don't want to get too carried away because that is how you will mess up the nails you want to consistently be checking and making sure that the shape is going the way that you want it to go so as you can see just going back and forth back and forth back and forth making sure that the nail file is completely pressed up against the side of the nail and making sure that everything is going in the direction you want it to go and as you can see here i'm picking up her previous finger that i shaped making sure that they are identical or close to identical as possible and then i moved on to this finger so you want to make sure you are comparing everything this is a problem that a lot of beginners have i noticed in beginner sets that a lot of the nails really don't look similar as they should and I think that's why a lot of people said they need help with shaping, trying to figure out why their shapes look so off. You just have to make sure that all of the nails are as close to the same as possible. The way you do that is being consistent with your techniques. If you notice, I'm using the exact same technique every single time in every single video, not just because, you know, that's my style or whatever, but because using consistent techniques gives me consistent results and practice of course you always got to practice so once everything is nice and shaped i'm using a fine grit carbide drill bit and i'm going at um like a medium fast speed i'm just going over the surface of the nail to even out the surface of the nail make sure that everything is nice and smooth there's no lumps and bumps or dips in the nail and making sure that that cuticle area is as flush as possible. You want these nails to look like they grew out of her finger, okay? Nobody wants that thick bump or hump right there at the cuticle edge of their nail. That is not cute. Even though they're long and glamorous, they can still look like she grew them. It's nothing wrong with that, okay? We got the shape popping. We got the design popping. You want to make sure your cuticle area is popping, Okay, nobody likes no busted, crusty cuticles. So get that cleaned up. If there's any product on the skin, go around it very, very slowly and get the product off the skin, okay? Do not let your clients leave like that. And for me, this part really doesn't take very long, but back in the beginning of my career, it did, not gonna lie. Um, but once you get your acrylic application down, you have the acrylic application as close to the finished product as possible you will not have to file as much um, you want to make sure that the apex is in the right place if there's anything that's too thick this is the time to debulk as well and always look at your nail from different angles from the side view from the front view just to make sure that everything is completely even and make sure that there's nothing that you don't like being that these nails you know are white or this natural color there's just one flat color sometimes it's hard to see from the top so if you turn her nail to the side you can see sometimes some stuff that need to be adjusted a little bit better once i finish filing and buffing i'm going to have her wash her hands and i'm going to show you how i did this snake skin so i used the mia secret blooming gel you can use any blooming gel, honestly. And you just want to make sure that you're using a very, very thin layer. Blooming gel, basically, you apply this layer. You do not cure it. And now I'm applying the design right on top of the gel without curing it. If the layer of blooming gel is too thick, these splotches will be running into each other. And like this design would just get a mess and it would get out of hand. So if you notice that your product is moving around too much, try applying a thinner layer. 
once you have applied the blooming gel you'll go in with the color of your choice and basically mimicking a snake print so usually for me when i do the snake print i'll do the bigger blocks down the middle and then i'll just do some smaller blocks on both sides to accent the bigger ones i'm using the brush straight out of the gel polish bottle and i'm not worrying about making them look identical you know this is supposed to be given the effect of animal print animals in nature do not look geometric they do not look perfect so i'm not worried about this looking like anything specific or making sure everything looks the same or nothing like that um, this design is a lot faster and easier than it looks just dot it on there put it in the lamp and move on i did cure these nails after each finger just because with the blooming gel it does continue to kind of move so once i finish with one finger i put place it in the lamp and then moved on to the next one and with this being the thumb i'm just doing the blocks in the center a little bit bigger but it's literally the same technique random little square shapes and then go all on the sides the reason why i don't do the whole length of the nail is just because i don't want the middle layer to spread completely to the sides so halfway down the nail you kind of see me stop do the sides and then go back to the middle that's just to protect the blooming gel from going all the way to the side of the nail but anyway now we're moving on to crystals okay again i am using my sting beauty brush on nail glue this nail glue is super versatile i just use it for everything far as crystals nail tips encapsulated stuff i i just use my nail glue it works for everything um you don't have to do anything just brush it place the crystal and move on it dries within 60 seconds so you do want to make sure you're putting everything in the spot that you want it however once it's there it's there i don't spray with the glue dry spray only because the glue dries up pretty fast but if I'm in a rush or something and I need to hurry up and top coat, then I will. But yeah, with the crystal designs, I'm pretty random. I'm not really having a plan besides that I want something that's going to cover up the middle of her nail. Something cute and blingy. See, this one got out of place and it had already dried a little bit. So the glue dries super fast. If you want something for crystals that doesn't dry so fast, I would recommend using the jewelry gel from Sting Beauty. The gel doesn't set until you put it in the lamp. So you can still move your crystal design as much as you need to until you place it in the lamp. Both products work just as good as each other. It just depends on how I'm feeling at the moment, what I'm going to use. So once I finish applying on my crystals, I'm using a matte top coat. I'm not going to tell you where I got it from. You could probably guess that this is going to be coming from Sting Beauty within the next few months as well. So this is the matte top coat that I use. And I'm just placing this everywhere that the crystals are not. The main thing you want to make sure, especially with matte top coat, you do not want this on top of the crystals. Look at that pretty white nail. So I'm just going to place a small crystal design right here at the cuticle area using my brush on nail glue. When you're working close to the skin around the cuticle with the glue, just apply it very sparingly. You don't want this to flood all into her skin when we just work so hard keeping all the acrylic off the skin. So just apply a little bit. It doesn't take too much. do not forget you guys i'm doing a giveaway for one jar of that natural milky clear whatever you want to call it color only way to enter is to put your name for the color in the comments okay thank you guys so much for watching my video if you made it this far do not forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more great nail content love you guys and i will talk to you soon